everyone. Welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today, I'm so excited. We're doing another collaboration with Heidi Sonbull from Heidi Sonbull and Corey from Desert DIY. Today, we're going to be doing an ugly duckling challenge where you take something that's pretty ugly and needs some new life brought back into it. I'll link their channels down below as well as the playlist so you can see more of these ugly duckling challenges. I hope everyone is doing very well. Today is Sunday and I just finished with watching mass on YouTube. And so I really encourage everyone, even though you can't gather physically, we can always gather spiritually. I think we have the most amazing crafting family here on this YouTube channel and everybody is so encouraging and sending out prayers and well wishes to those of you that are suffering in this time. Most of you know I would rather give birth than be on camera, but I just love everyone so much and I thought this would be a way for me to reach out to you and let you know I love you, I appreciate you, and this too shall pass. If you're not subscribed already, please consider hitting that subscribe button below and comment, like, and hit that bell so that you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. I'm really trying to pump these videos out for you guys because I know some people are going stir crazy and need a little encouragement and something just to distract you from all of the bad news. So let's get started. So for this ugly duckling challenge, I'm going to be using this bulletin board that I found tucked away in the garage. And of course, I'm going to show you my cobwebs again, but it's actually something that was owned by my son-in-law when he was in high school. And so it has a little bit of meaning and it works out perfectly because I'm going to make this for a wall that's in my daughter and son-in-law's kitchen and it's going to be the perfect size. So the dimensions of this are 46 and a half inches long by 22 and a half inches wide and of course it could work horizontally as well but for this project I'm going to be using it in the vertical orientation. And it's not really ugly, it's just very plain. So we're gonna give it some new life. And so to start with, I'm gonna be using three of these oval 10 planters from Dollar Tree, some Waverly white chalk paint, as well as some Martha Stewart chalkboard paint in black, and then some Waverly wax in antique, some burlap fabric, and you can get this at Walmart for $3.49 a yard, and we'll probably use like less than a yard. Some black and white buffalo check ribbon, and I get this at Hobby Lobby. And then we'll be using the Silhouette Cameo 3, so we'll have our black vinyl from Frisco Craft, as well as our transfer tape, the weeding tools. And I'm also going to be using my 12 by 24 inch mat, as well as my 12 by 12. And then some painter's tape. And then my glue gun, my scissors, E6000, and my ruler. So ignore the wire cutters and the chenille stem. So the first thing we're going to do is get our board ready by taking a rag and wiping it off and getting all the cobwebs off and the stickers and anything else that he had stuck onto this. And so I'm going to take my painter's tape and mask off the frame so that I can paint it. Originally I had planned to make this double sided and so I was going to do the back side as well but I, this ended up taking a little bit longer than I thought, so I'm just doing the back side. So now I'm going to measure and figure out where I'm going to place my paint blocks and I measured in from the side and had my planter there so I could see about where I would like it 
And so I measured in eight inches and made pencil marks all the way down and then took my yardstick and made a long line so that I could mask it off. I didn't go all the way to the edge at the top because I'm gonna place a sign at the top there and I went down six inches and then masked that off as well. So anytime I'm trying to paint a straight line, I push down on the painter's tape so that there's no bleeding or seepage under the tape. And then I just poured my paint onto the surface and started painting away. And there's just something about doing this because it reminds me of finger painting or something. I don't know, it's like messy or uh, it just makes me happy. <laughs> anyway, so I put all of the paint on and because my frame wasn't yet all the way dry and I really wanted to participate in this ugly duckling challenge, I just cut it in with a chiseled brush and tried to get as straight of a line as I possibly could. And it wasn't perfect, but it's a farmhouse sign and it's meant to be rustic. So if you have any mess ups, that's okay. So to speed up the drying process, I used my heat gun and got that as dry as I could and then pulled off the painter's tape and it was a perfect line. So now I'm gonna paint the other side and I put some more painter's tape down and I always let a little bit of the paint show through, just peeking out a little bit so that when I go to paint the other side, I will make sure that I don't leave any of the brown showing. So even though my white chalk paint was dry to the touch, I wasn't sure if the painter's tape was gonna pull it up when I took it off. So I just pushed down uh, just at the edge. So if anything did come up, it would just be a little bit. So then I took my chalkboard paint and put it on the other side. And chalkboard paint, I'm sure you already know this, but chalkboard paint is the kind that you can use chalk to write on whereas chalk paint is completely different. It's just made with chalk. So anyway, normally you're supposed to put two coats of chalkboard paint to get a complete coverage, but this covered pretty well. And when you do use two coats, you're supposed to let it dry in between coats for a whole hour. So I didn't have that kind of time. I really wanted to get this video out to you guys. So we just went with it but it looks really good in the end, so it worked out. So then I just took off all of my tape and I'm gonna leave the top six inches in the brown color of the board. So then I painted my planters with some more of the white chalk paint and I enlisted the help of a couple of recruits. So we had our grandkids over and we sprayed them down and sanitized them and sprayed them with some Lysol and they were completely sterile. <laughs> so this is Cadence and Carson. Cadence is seven and Carson is four. You guys probably already know that. But they were really happy to help and love painting anytime grandma lets them in the craft room. So they just got on a coat of the white chalk paint and you know, this is okay to let the kids paint because this is very forgiving and because it's rustic, we're gonna add a distressed paint job over it. So it didn't matter how good or how bad they painted, but they did do a really good job. So because I don't want the words showing and they're raised, I used some burlap to wrap my planters. And all I did was cut about a 10 inch strip or 10 inches wide and then measured around to see how long to go all the way around and give me some overlap so that I could attach it in the back. And so I just cut out three of those strips and then made a hem on one end with a glue gun and just folded it over. I should have had my finger protectors on, but I was really trying to get this done for you guys. So I just cut off the edge that was really messy and made the hem and that's going to actually be what covers our words in the front and so after i got that all the way glued i'm gonna put it upside down 
so that and then put the rest the excess fabric is going to go inside after i attach it in the back it'll make sense in a second <laughs> Their little hands are cracking me up. <laughs> They're chunky little hands. Anyway, um, so now I'm gonna take my black paint and give it a little distressing. I could have done this before I put the burlap on, but I just, you know, am not thinking right today. <laughs> so I just did some, and you don't have to do the back because we're gonna attach it to the board. And so I just did the super, super dry brush method and got that looking all nicely distressed. So now I'm going to take some E6000 and this is actually the black kind which I bought on accident but this works out perfectly because it's going on a black background so if any any of it seeps out or anything you wouldn't be able to see it but it didn't seep so then I just put a whole bunch of hot glue onto the back there and then placed it onto the board and then I'm gonna reach inside and push it down so that it gets a really good grip. So the hot glue will keep it in place right now, but the E6000, once it dries after 24 hours, it's not going anywhere. But just to give it some more security, I took my automatic or electric staple gun and went right through the tin and into the board. And so I put the bottom one on first and then I put the top one on where I wanted it and then measured to get the middle one in the center. I ended up taking this out to the kitchen table because I needed some more room and it was easier to show you guys and get a better angle of the entire project. It's always hard to do things that are tall and get it all on camera in one frame but so this made it a little bit easier plus there was a lot of outside light and it was really pretty and there was more room for the kids too So here's what we have so far and I think it's looking really good and so now I am going to add some bows to the front of each of the planters and so I just took my buffalo check ribbon and folded it over into a bow just kind of crisscrossed it in front and then used a chenille stem oh I told you guys to ignore the chenille stem okay well it's back and so I just twisted it in the back and dovetailed the edges and put hot glue on the back and attached one to each of the bins
So now I'm going to measure to see how large I need to make my decal and I measured both the top part which is going to say farmers and then along the side how wide and how long I needed it to say market. And so because it's so long I had to use my 24 inch mat. So using my Frisco Craft vinyl I'm going to only be able to get M-A-R-K and then I put my farmers on alongside it so that I could at least get that much done so that I'm not wasting too much vinyl and so I just cut those out and then I'm going to cut out my ET on my 12 by 12 mat. So to make the weeding process a little bit easier, I always use my utility knife, especially when it's a larger decal like this, and I'll make some lines or cuts in between the words and letters to make it easier to pull that vinyl up and not have so much in one hand. I didn't quite cut all the way through and you have to be careful because you don't want to cut through the backing paper but I didn't quite make it all the way through the vinyl either because I wasn't working on a hard surface so it didn't work out this time but just as an FYI that is something that is very helpful. So to attach my ET to mark it, I just took some scotch tape and cut it long ways and added that bottom piece. So this is the transfer tape that I use and this is from Dollar Tree. This is That's what the label looks like, but it's actually in the shelf paper aisle. So it's not going to say transfer tape. It says shelf paper, shelf liner. So I have a lot of people asking me about that. So to get the tape off of the backing sheet, I just push a little teeny tiny corner down away from me and then it kind of rolls up onto your finger if you just roll it back towards you and it'll stick to your finger and then come off really easily. So now I'm just going to place the one edge at the very top of the decal and then let it roll 
onto the decal and it stays straight and flat and is way easier to apply. So because this is kind of a chipboard surface and not cork or wood, the vinyl wasn't sticking and was staying on the transfer tape. So in order to get it onto the board, I had to use a, I don't even know what this is called, I guess like a putty knife or spatula or something. But all I did was push down on the straight edge while pulling the transfer tape back towards me and giving it a little pressure so it would just come off and stay on the chipboard. But then I had to go back and use my squeegee to make sure that it adhered and then once it got into all the little nooks and crannies, it stayed down perfectly. So one of my sweet viewers, Rosario, was asking how to get the decal onto the surface of a project she was doing and she couldn't get the transfer tape to let go of the vinyl. So I was trying to explain in a comment how to do that and it's kind of hard to do but what I was trying to say is when you pull the transfer tape up, just keep it on the surface. So as you can see here, Rosario, I'm pulling it, but I'm not lifting it at all. I'm keeping my hand on the surface. So you're not lifting the tape up, you're just pulling it back and keeping it down as much as you possibly can. And it also helps if you put it on your clothes first so it takes away some of that tackiness and is not as sticky. So now I'm going to use some checkers from a Dollar Tree checker and chess set that I'm doing another DIY with. But I just took some super glue and put black checkers on the top and bottom so it would look like it was a sign and then to finish it up I just filled the bins and wrote in chalk what each of those items were so you can change it with whatever you have and I think this turned out super super adorable and it's also functional because you can actually use it and if you put something like onions and the onion peels get into the bottom of the baskets you can just pull the insides up of the burlap and it'll drop to the floor and you could sweep it all up. So I hope you guys like this.
don't forget to go visit Heidi Sonbolt DIY and Corey at Desert DIY. And I'll have both of their channels linked below as well as the playlist. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think, and share it. And what else can you do? Oh, subscribe. <laughs> So I hope everybody found this as a slight distraction to everything. I love you guys. I'm praying for everyone and I am seeing all of the comments and it's really taking me a long time to get to your comments because I've been trying to get so many videos out, but I do see them as soon as they come in. So I hope you all have a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.